Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to rock. I shit you not. I, I think it was at the Game Awards where they did the, the cloud trailer. I actually got a bit teary. And I was like, what the hell? Like, why is my face leaking? And I realized it was because I was just so stoked that a modern, like, day graphic engine is doing Final Fantasy VII. And I thought about it, and I was like, why am I so stoked about it? And I realized that Final Fantasy VII had such a huge impact on me. Like a massive impact. Like when I was, um, I think probably around about 10 or 11, that's when I got the game. And I got it as a Christmas gift from uh, my uncle. And we're all at my grandparents, and we're all opening the gifts. And I remember getting it. Hey, Iona. I remember getting it. And then I, I'd owned a PlayStation 1 at that point, maybe about a year. It was like the family PlayStation, mine and my father's. Um, I'd owned a Sega Mega Drive at one point, and I'd played on like Nintendo SNESs and stuff at like other people's houses or whatnot. Um, but I wasn't like a massive gamer at the time. I was just as much as a gamer as your average kid. And I remember getting the Final Fantasy game, and I'm pretty sure it was quite... Um, close to when it released because if you remember you'd get a, a playstation game and it would have like the colored artwork on it and then usually after about a year it would go platinum and it still had the colored artwork on it so i'm assuming it was within a year of the original release and i remember looking at it going i've never heard of this what the fuck is final fantasy and i did the whole oh thanks you know you know being nice thanks for the present but otherwise i was just completely disinterested i was like i've never heard of final fantasy i have no idea what it is and then i didn't play it for like a year or two and it was about a year or two later that I, I, th I think I'd just finished reading a book. It was the summer holidays in the UK. Um, when you're in school, you get six weeks holidays during the summer. So six entire weeks in a row of just frolicking, basically. And I think it was getting towards the end and I'd, I'd, I had nothing to do. And I remember looking like at my shelf with my PlayStation games all in a row. And I saw Final Fantasy still in the cellophane, taking it out. And I remember looking through the manual in it. And then being like, okay, it does kind of look interesting. Fuck it. I'll put it in. We'll give it a go. And I remember playing it for like eight hours straight at like the age of 12. And being completely enthralled by it. And my, my old man came in and was like, what are you playing? I was like, oh, it's the game that my own Kyle Allen got me. And he was like, this looks really cool. And he ended up playing it as well on his own save. And what we would end up doing is whenever I wasn't playing it, he was. And I'd watch him play. And we'd, we'd do it so we didn't see spoilers. So, like, it, it, it was quite weird because I would get ahead of him, then he'd get ahead of me and stuff like that. Um, so we, we, we could help each other out because we'd be like, oh, I've done this bit, so if you need help, blah, 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 and vice versa. So one that's probably that as well. Like, it's one of the few good memories I have of my father. Um, but mostly, I just got so enthralled by the story of this game because most of the games I'd played were just, like, Metroidvania stuff or, like, Sonic or you know, uh, Tekken and things like that. Like, Wipeout was a game I played loads. Nothing with a, a particularly in-depth narrative. And, like, when um, Aeris dies, who, at the time, being a naive child, I, I thought it was Iris, and I, I've had that in my head. And even now, I still think Iris instead of Aeris. But when Aeris died, I cried. And it was the first game to ever make me cry. And I was like, what the hell? What's going on? This is, this is fantastic. <laughs> like, I'm weeping, but it's fantastic that it had such an effect on me. And then about five or six years later, I, I replayed it when I was a bit older and more capable, uh, capable, <laughs> capable and able to understand some of the more nuanced bits of the story, like the political intrigue and all that shenanigans. And I, like, 100 percented it. And th there's just something about the world of Final Fantasy VII that enthralls me so much. Like, it's got dragons in it. Like, my, my favorite creature on all the planet. Behumot, Neo Behumot, and then Zero Behumot. Like, I've got three dragons that I can summon to fuck people up. That's awesome. And then the weapons that kind of look like dragons do, and I thought that was cool. And then they, they expanded on the world with Crisis Core and Advent Children. And, you know, I loved those so much. I hated what they did to Behumot in Advent Children. I thought he looked stupid in that, but that's just me. Otherwise, loved those. So when I saw at the Game Awards, like that cloud video, I, I just, my, my eye leaked, and I was just, I was just so happy that the Final Fantasy VII Remake existed. So when it comes out and release, and is released, I'm hopefully going to get the Collector's Edition, because I really want that statue as well. 
Yeah, that's 250 quid though. <laughs> 250 quid on three different games that are going to come out. So that'll be a bit of a giggle. And then it gets re-released on PC at some point anyway. But either way, I'm definitely getting it, and I'm, I'm very stoked for it. And people are like, oh, but Cyberpunk. Like, I'm, I'm stoked about Cyberpunk. I am, truly. But I'm more stoked about Final Fantasy VII. It has far, far more an impact on my, my upbringing in my life and what made me a gamer, you know? 